find the gradient field for the following potential function, sketch a few level curves of phi and a few vectors in the gradient field. And so here we are given the potential function phi of x, y defined by 2x squared plus y squared such that 2x squared plus 4y squared is less than or equal to 128. So the first thing that we need to do is find the gradient field. And we know our gradient field is capital vector F defined by the gradient of the potential function, del phi. So we have phi defined in terms of x, y. So we need the partial derivative with, of phi with respect to x, as well as the partial derivative of phi with respect to y. So taking the partial derivative of phi with respect to x, we have 4x. The partial derivative of phi with respect to y leaves us with 8y. And so therefore, the gradient field, del phi, is defined as, or defined by the components for x, 8, y. And if you'd like, we can simplify this by pulling out that common 4. So this leaves us with the scalar multiple 4 times the vector x, 2, y. And so this is our beautiful final answer here for the gradient field. So now that we have the gradient field, we want to go ahead and sketch some level curves for our potential functions, as well as some of the vectors that exist in our field. So to do that, we need to identify the level curves. So it's not we're going to find several curves, but there's only one level curve here. So we want to identify the level curve. So we are going to let phi of x, y be equal to some scalar c. And thus identify what this curve is going to look like. So we have 2x squared plus 4y squared is equal to that scalar c. And then we want to keep in mind here that we have restrictions on our constant c that are given to us. So this is going to be c greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 128. So this right-hand side bound here, 128, is given to us. The left-hand side bound, 0, comes from the fact that no matter what x and y values you plug in, you're always going to produce or have a positive output. So this is our level curve. And looking at this level curve here, since the coefficients of x and y are different, this is not a circle, but an ellipse. And so this is our generalized level curve for this potential function. And so now we want to go ahead and sketch spe specific level curves on our graph. So we want to choose varying values of c and then plot them. We want to choose values for c such that c is an element of the interval 0 to 128. And you could choose any values within this interval that you'd like. So my first case, I'm going to go ahead and let c be equal to 4. And when we plug this into our level curve, we have 2x squared plus 4y squared is equal to 4. And we can divide both sides here by 2, so I end up with a simplified level curve or simplified ellipse. x squared plus 2y squared is equal to 2. So this is our first level curve that we'll go ahead and sketch. And let's do one more for good luck. Let's let c be 8. So this gives us 2x squared plus 4y squared is equal to 8. And again, dividing both sides by 2 here to simplify, we have the ellipse x squared plus 2y squared is equal to 4. And so here is the second ellipse that we'll go ahead and sketch. And again, feel free to find additional level curves to your heart's content. 
And the reason I picked these two C values here is because they have easy to plot X and Y intercepts. And so looking at our first level curve here, we can see that we have X intercepts or zeros at X is equal to plus or minus the square root of two. And we have Y intercepts at y is equal to plus or minus 1. In case 2 here, we've got x-intercepts at x is equal to plus or minus 2. And then we have y-intercepts at y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2. So, going ahead and sketching this, we have our y-axis and our x-axis. And so using those x-intercepts here, we can see we have an ellipse. So here's our first ellipse when c is 4. So we can say there's positive square root of 2. Here's positive 1. And then when c is 8, Here is our second ellipse. And let's see, we've got a x-intercept here at 2 and negative 2, and then y-intercepts at positive square root of 2, negative square root of 2. So now that we have our level curves, we need to find some vectors in the gradient field to plot on these curves. And so to do that, I'm going to choose arbitrary points in each quadrant to see what direction these vectors are pointing. So remember this is in quadrant one, so both x and y are positive. In quadrant two, x is negative, y is positive. Quadrant three, both components are negative. In quadrant four, x is positive, y is negative. So let's create that table of values. We have our points, x, y. And we think, how do these points correspond to our gradient vector field. So our vector in this case is defined as del phi, and we have 4 multiplied by x to y. And so let's give ourselves a little more room. So in quadrant 1, we have an arbitrary point with positive x and y. So plugging this in, we have the vector field, or excuse me, the vector f, and we should say the vector f of del phi, where x is positive and y is positive, is going to be equal to 4 times a vector with a positive x and a positive y component. So from this point, we know we're moving in a positive x direction and a positive y direction. So the vector is pointing out and up. Doing the same thing for the ordered pair in quadrant 2. We plug this into our gradient phi. So I have a minus x positive y. So the vector in the field has a, po excuse me, has a negative x component, a positive y component. So again, using our slope, we know that the vector has a, or moves in a negative x direction, a positive y direction. So again, the vector is pointing out and up. For a arbitrary point here in quadrant 3, the gradient of phi is going to be defined by a vector who has both a negative x and negative y value. So we know that this, from this arbitrary point, moving in a negative x direction, a negative y direction, your vector is pointing down and out. And last but not least, we have that arbitrary ordered pair in quadrant 4, positive x, negative y. So the gradient at this point has a positive x value and a negative y value. So using our knowledge of the slope, we can say we're moving in a positive x direction and then a negative y. So your vector is pointing down. So we can see that we have a radial field here. So we can go right ahead and incorporate other vectors on the level curves, pointing out 
Again, you can use as many points or as many vectors here as you want to visualize this vector field. And so this is our gradient field.